I'm Jenna. And I'm Steve. Welcome to another Field Trip Friday. We're here at Prodigal Farm. Woo, I am so excited. We're going to learn about goats. We're going to learn about the, how to make cheese. And I think we're going to be able to taste some cheese today, too. I'm super excited to taste some cheese. Just so excited. <laughs> I'm really hungry. It. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Hi, Madeline. Hi, Hi. Kat. How are you? Hi, yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having us here today. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today or what Prodigal Farm is? So I'm Kat. I am one of the owners of Prodigal Farm. And Prodigal Farm is a farmstead goat dairy. Um, and that means that we produce all the goat milk that we use in making cheese. And we make goat cheese and we started buying cow's milk from another nearby farm and now we make some cow's milk cheeses too. But we have a really strict certification that our, farm, that our animals are well treated and that's called animal welfare approved. And we raise our goats on pasture. You guys are gonna see a lot of pasture today. Um, and we think that that makes for happier and healthier goats and really great cheese. So I'm looking forward to you guys tasting some cheese later on. Woohoo! I'm excited too. That sounds really amazing. And Madeline, well, how are you related to this operation? Um, well, I used to work here at the farm um, back in the early days, the first year that, of its licensed operation. Um, I lived out here and worked here. And now you can see by my shirt, I work <laughs> as part of the education team for the Museum of Life and Science. So I was really excited to make this connection between the farm. That's a really special place to me and a place where a lot of cool science happens um, and an educational organization so that we can share this love of goats and cheese and all <laughs> things delicious. Um, and goat related. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go take a look around. Let's look around. Thank you so all much right. for having us. Woohoo! Come on. Goats have really high nutrition requirements and are also very low in putting fat on their bodies. Yes. So, so what are they eating here? Um, right now we're in the middle of the pasture and this pasture has mostly fescue in it. But the thing that mo the goats are most designed to eat is what's called browse. And so that's things that grow in the wooded edge and that could include poison ivy, which is delicious for them. Wow. They like brambles. Um, they love to eat like blackberry, um, just the plants, or sweet gum trees. Um, so just as people shouldn't eat any one food, and it wouldn't make it, we would not be healthy if we ate only yeah. one thing. Yeah. We want to try to grow things for our animals that give them a lot of choices, and so they can really get a balanced diet.
and then you want to acidify that milk in some way. And so there's some very simple kinds of cheese that the acidification should, could just be that the milk is sitting for a very long time. Um, we um, choose certain cultures that we purchase that we add little tiny amounts um, for that whole vat. And then this we use to pasteurize the milk. And what does pasteurize mean? So pasteurization is a heat treatment that's designed to kill certain organisms that could be present in the milk. And so there's a variety of different temperatures that you can pasteurize at, but we use the lowest temperature that we can to count as legal pasteurization because you want to be as gentle on the milk as you can for cheese making. Mm -hmm. And so we're um, heating it up to 145 degrees and holding it there for 30 minutes um, and then cooling it down um, to the temperature that we want to start making that cheese at. So this is a pretty cool uh, analog image. of the. T you can see the temperature of the milk and you can see time, uh, how long it's at each temperature and you can see the curve as it goes up and then holds at that temperature and then cools back down. Different cheese styles have used that point of flocculation as a benchmark for when to go to the next step. So the next step that's going to happen as this keeps getting firmer and firmer is you're going to be cutting the curd. So this is the cheese environment for the softer cheeses. And so this one is gonna be field of creams and it's got, you can see the rind is just starting to grow on it. And it yes. also has a bunch of herbs and spices yeah, in the rind. it smells amazing in here. Yes, I love that aroma. Cheesemakers tend to call these spaces caves. And <laughs> because they are created to try to imitate caves in their environment. And so not so much airflow. You see we have a lot of humidity in here. You can see the moisture on the walls. You also see that we've got different batch numbers indicated so we can keep track of which cheese is at what point in its aging.
We've gotten to learn a little bit about how cheeses are, are made and where they come from. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit about how they taste and, and kind of the actual experience. I mean, that's kind of what this is all about, is, is building up to the production of this cheese and then that's a food for people. And, and not only is it nutritious, but it actually also has, you know, all this in interesting character, which is probably a big part of your business, is adding those different characters. So I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about how do you how do you even describe cheese? Like, what are some of the words you might use to describe the flavor of cheese? So you might get um, grassy flavors or things like hay or straw. Obviously, cream, butter, but sometimes like caramel or toffee or savory, brothy could be a flavor. Like, and it's not like we're adding this to it. It's right. just the way the flavor develops, and right. different batches have their own character. So. We had, had one batch of this that had an amazing roast beef note to it. Wow. That's not what we typically get, but it was delicious. Yeah, let me even step back a sec and think, we are so used to using our eyes every day and thinking very carefully about what we see. Mm -hmm. And we don't usually think as carefully about what are we tasting. And so the whole process of being really mindful and thoughtful about what is in your mouth and thinking about each little bite is a whole different and really cool experience. Let's taste. My tummy is rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> so this cheese is a soft ripened goat's milk cheese. And then we also were then aging this in our blue um, aging space. And so you can see the blue growing on the surface, but Aside from like stray bits, it's not on the inside. Mm -hmm. So this is what's called an externally ripened blue cheese. Mm. And we've won multiple national awards for this cheese. Cool. It's beautiful. Well, I have, my no I have to like get it in my nose to smell it. It's not very uh, aromatic. Yeah, it's very light. Kind so. of like doughy. You might also get notes with some of these soft ripened ones of citrusy or lemony. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. definitely citrusy. And so this is just really good. <laughs> so, that so that was a goat's milk cheese. Yeah. This is a goat's milk blue, and we call it Blue Chevrolet. Blue and it's <laughs> named after my 1955 Chevy pickup. Chev means goat in French, and lay means milk in French. And so to me, this was a, a name in search of a cheese. I love yeah. it. Like Interestingly, this one, the kind of saltiness comes on a little bit later for me. Like first it's kind of got this, a little bit of sharp uh, tanginess, like yeah. a little bit of kind of tang. And then, then I kind of like rolled it into like a little bit of like a granular kind of texture yes. and a little bit more kind of salty flavor. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much for having us here and letting us taste your treat, your cheese. Yeah. And uh, meet your cheese makers. <laughs> go, go help me spread the gospel of cheese. Absolutely. Yeah. I have one more question before we wrap up here. Where can people buy your cheese? So in Durham, the Durham co-op, a lot of the co-ops carry our cheeses, but I would love it if people would come and visit me at the South Durham Farmer's Market yeah. on Saturday mornings. Cool. Um, and they can visit Dave um, at the Chapel Hill Farmer's Market. Yeah. And you have an online store too. Yes, we have an online store so people can um, learn a little bit more about what we have and they can even place pre-orders to pick up on the farm. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Kat yeah, and Thank Madeline. you guys for thank coming you. out. Yeah, thank you both for sharing this.